Bedtime Story Club presents What's in Your Pocket? Collecting Nature's Treasures. Every famous scientist was once a curious kid. Charles collected rocks, shells, and beetles. George stuffed his pockets full of seeds. And Jane kept worms under her pillow. These kids didn't know it, but as they packed their pockets, categorized the clutter, and documented discoveries, they were growing science skills. Meet nine budding scientists whose outdoor play led to a lifelong passion. Where will nature's treasures lead you? Follow along with us, and if you have your own book, turn the page when you hear the sound that goes like this. Okay, kids, what time is it? It's story time! Yay! When you explore the great outdoors and find something strange and wonderful, do you put it in your pocket? Scientists collect specimens so they can observe the details of natural artifacts. George found a strange seed pod. He put it in his pocket. He forgot all about it until... Pop! Seeds exploded all over the room. After that, George had to empty out his pockets on the porch. Nobody knew that George would grow up to be the famous scientist George Washington Carver. He helped farmers grow peanuts and other seeds in poor soil. He discovered almost 300 uses for the peanut, including soap, glue, fuel, and a new version of peanut butter. Will found beautiful blue eggs high in a tree. Needing his hands to climb back down, he held the eggs in his mouth. Oops! Will crashed to the ground. He swallowed the eggs. Nobody knew Will would become the famous naturalist William Beebe. As an adult, he set a world record by dropping half a mile down under the ocean waves in a steel ball called a bathysphere. Will was the first person to see glowing fish and other deep sea animals alive in their natural habitats. Valerie Jane found wiggly, squiggly worms. She wanted to keep them close, so she put them under her pillow. Her mother persuaded her to put the worms back in the garden. Nobody knew Valerie Jane would become the famous primatologist, Jane Goodall. As an adult, Jane slept in the rainforest with animals all around her. She studied chimpanzees, learned their ways, and watched them use tools, a discovery that changed how people thought about animals. When you explore the great outdoors and find strange and wonderful things, do you put them in your pocket? Do you add them to your collection? 
As scientists sort, compare, and categorize specimens, they learn to see patterns within their collections. Charles collected lots and lots of things. Colorful rocks, empty shells, and living beetles. Charles! His sister convinced him that killing so many creatures was wrong. So Charles let the living beetles be. Charles didn't know that he would keep collecting throughout his life. When Charles Darwin grew up, he sailed across oceans to collect beetles and birds and other creatures. He noticed that animals well suited to a place survived and passed their traits to their young, while animals not well suited died off. Over time, this could lead to changes in a whole group of animals. Meg found flowers and shells and lucky stones. She put them in her pocket. She climbed trees and collected leaves. She sorted and labeled and stuffed everything under her bed. Meg wasn't the only one who liked the collection. Meg didn't know she would keep climbing trees as an adult. She didn't know she would develop new methods for getting into trees safely using slingshots and hot air balloons. Those methods helped Meg Lohman and other biologists discover an entire world of treasures in the treetops. Diego collected snails and slugs and scorpions. Sometimes they escaped in the house. For his mom's birthday, Diego gave her a gift. Una lagartija, a lizard. She loved it. Together they marveled at the lizard, then returned it to the wild. Diego didn't know he would become a herpetologist who studies lizards and frogs. He never guessed that he would get to name a new type of frog after his mother. Diego Cisneros Heredia has devoted his life to helping people connect to wildlife. When you explore the great outdoors and find strange and wonderful things, do you put them in your pocket? Do you add them to your collection? Do you make amazing discoveries? Young collectors make significant discoveries too. Trained to see details and seek patterns, collectors of any age can surprise us with their finds. Mary found lots and lots of fossils. Her whole family collected them. When her brother spotted something sticking out of a cliff, Mary dug and dug until she discovered an entire skeleton. Young Mary's discovery helped people realize that animals go extinct. Mary Anning lived in a time before people knew much about fossils or extinction. When she was just 12 years old, she discovered a skeleton that didn't match any living creature. Scientists named it ichthyosaur, meaning fish lizard. Ichthyosaurs lived during the time of the dinosaurs and died out millions of years ago. Maria found caterpillars. She collected them. She painted them. Then Maria discovered that caterpillars are part of...
a science surprise. Young Maria showed the world that caterpillars turn into butterflies. Maria Sibylla Marian lived in a time when most people did not understand the life cycle of insects. People thought adult insects grew out of mud, rotting meat, or old fruit. When she was 13, Maria started collecting caterpillars. She watched them closely and painted what she saw. Later, Maria created books about the wonder of metamorphosis. Bonnie found creatures in tide pools. She filled her pockets with shells and sand from the sea. As a teenager, Bonnie collected sea slugs. She borrowed slugs from other scientific collections. She looked closely at slugs everyone thought were the same. Young Bonnie's observation led to... The discovery of a brand new creature! Bonnie Lee lives in modern times when advanced tools help scientists make new discoveries. When she was 15, Bonnie Lee looked at the shapes, patterns, and tongues of sea slugs. Using chemicals and computers, she read the secret code called DNA from inside their bodies. Bonnie helped identify a type of sea slug that had never before been recognized by science. Throughout history, kids have found all kinds of strange and wonderful things. They've created collections, they've made discoveries, they've changed the world of science. Every discovery started with just one thing. One little thing that could fit in a pocket. What's in your pocket? A note from the author, My Collections. Visit my house and you'll see a basket of bones and stones beside my front door, a clutter of fossils on my windowsill, and a jumble of strange and wonderful things on my bedside table. As a kid, I stuffed my pockets full of nature's treasures. Later, when I studied biology, I realized that collecting, sorting, and playing with natural artifacts had taught me to observe, classify, and discover like a scientist. Still later, I learned that my habits were thanks to a type of thinking and learning called naturalistic intelligence. If you feel most comfortable outdoors, enjoy sorting items, or are passionate about nature, you may possess this kind of intelligence too. In the past, scientists took more from nature than we ever would today. Back then, there were fewer people and more plants and animals on the planet. Today, over-collecting can cause problems. Like modern scientists, I'm respectful with my collecting. Many times, I snap photos or draw pictures instead of taking an item from nature. Here are my rules for collecting. To respect nature, I collect only things that are not alive. I collect only if it won't hurt nature. I never take rare items or things an animal might need. I collect only if it is allowed. In the United States, it is illegal to collect parts, feathers, feet, bones, beaks, even eggs of many kinds of birds. To respect the people I live with, I make sure my artifacts are clean and mostly stink-free. 
I have areas set aside for my treasures. I make sure my collections do not bother my family. To respect myself, I don't put my hands where my eyes can't see, like under a rock or a log. I learn about plants and animals that could hurt me and avoid them. I never put unknown items in my mouth.